Hello everyone, and welcome back. Now that we have our environment all set up and ready to go for web scraping by installing Beautiful Soup and requests, we're ready to go ahead and start learning some basic functionality in Beautiful Soup. So let's head over to VS Code and get started. So to start off here, I've already imported Beautiful Soup, and I've also brought over that same HTML example document that we were doing tests with. Later in this course, we're going to be parsing a real web page, but for now, it'll be good to get a grasp on some basic Beautiful Soup concepts and functionality using a very simple and clean HTML document, as once we get into parsing full web pages, things can get a lot more complicated. So when we're working with Beautiful Soup, the first thing we're always going to need to do is to create a new Beautiful Soup object out of whatever HTML that we want to parse. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'll create a new object and I'll call it soup. And it will be a Beautiful Soup object. And I will pass into it the HTML document string that we have up here. And unlike in our tests, I'm also going to add one more thing here. We're also going to need to specify a HTML parser. So you don't need to worry about the specifics of this, but this will suppress some warnings in the terminal and is just good practice when working with Beautiful Soup. So I'm going to specify the parser HTML.parser. And we will run this just to make sure that it works and we have no warning output or anything, so it looks like we are good to go. So before we begin diving into Beautiful Soup's features, I'd like to go over a little bit of theoretical background for what exactly we're doing here. So the name Beautiful Soup for this library might strike you as a little bit odd, but this is actually a metaphor that can be pretty useful to think about as we're moving forward learning how to web scrape. Basically, we can think of Beautiful Soup as turning this HTML string into essentially a soup of different HTML tags. And so what we're going to be doing, essentially, no matter how complex our web scraping gets, is fundamentally going to be picking out which tags we want from our soup, a process that Beautiful Soup even refers to as straining. So as we move forward here, you can always keep that image in the back of your mind that we have a HTML document, we have turned it into essentially a soup, and we are pulling out or straining out the particular ingredients or tags that we want from the data. So before we go ahead and try to strain out our first tag here, let's go ahead and get the lay of the land of our HTML document. Beautiful Soup provides a helpful function for printing out our HTML in a more tree-like structure that's much easier for us to read. So I'll go ahead and print our soup.printify. And so let's take a look at what this gives us. Okay, so we can see here we have now printed out our HTML document in a much more tree-like fashion so we can see the layers of nesting. The reason seeing this tree-like nested structure is very useful to us as web scrapers is that Beautiful Soup takes advantage of this structure. We can think of each of these HTML tags in terms of their relative location on the tree. So for instance, this title tag right here, we can say has a parent tag of head, and this head tag has a child tag of title and a parent tag of HTML. Almost every operation we're going to be doing in Beautiful Soup makes reference to this structure, so it's important to start thinking of our HTML documents in this way. But without further ado, let's go ahead and try and pick out a single tag from our soup. So I will head back to my editor, and I will comment out our prettified soup for now. But let's say, let's say I just want to access the title tag of our HTML. How could we go about doing that? 
So since our beautiful soup object has parsed this HTML, it's now aware of all of the different tags that it has within it. So if we want to pull out one single tag and we know exactly the type of tag that we want, we can simply issue this command, soup.title, soup.title, this will reference this tag, and let's see what happens. Okay, so now we can see that we have picked out this title tag from our HTML document. But recall the fundamentally nested nature of our HTML document. The tag that we've returned here itself contains information. For instance, this string that it contains inside of its tag. The powerful thing about beautiful soup is that not only does our soup object as a whole contain references to its contents, but so does any sub object that it returns. So if we want to access the string inside of this title tag, here's what we can do. I'm going to add a new line character here so it'll be easier to see out in our printout. But if we want to access the string inside of our title tag, we can simply print soup.title.string. And let's see what that gives us in relation to this. And here we go, we can see when we only called for the title tag, it gives us this entire tag back. But we can also parse further into this tag itself and return only the string inside of it. Tags in Beautiful Soup can also contain other tags. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of that here. Let's say we wanted to get at the B tag inside of this P tag. Well, to do that, we would do it in a similar way that we access the string inside of our title. So let me comment these out. And let's take a look at how we can access this B tag. So we will print out soup.p. This will give us this first P tag here. But what we want is the B tag inside of it. So we will add to our .p a .b. And this is actually all we need to do. So let's take a look and see if it worked. And there we go. We can see we've accessed that B tag that was inside of our P tag. So already with these very simple examples, we're seeing how Beautiful Soup works in a pretty fundamental way. No matter how complex your web scraping operations become, operations like this are going to still be very common. Because, again, our HTML is a fundamentally nested structure. And so we will, in most cases, have to end up parsing through our layers of HTML tags to get to the kind of information that we're looking for. So already at this stage, you should be able to play around with this syntax and get access to quite a few elements in this HTML document. Hi again. In this section, we'll be picking back up with learning the basics of beautiful soup on our simple test HTML string. So without further ado, let's get back into it. When we left off, we had just finished learning about accessing individual tags inside of our soup with this kind of syntax. And we're going to wrap up our discussion of this kind of syntax before moving on to more advanced searching features. So if we recall from previous video, we can access the internal contents of a tag by using the dot notation. But there's another kind of useful notation that will allow us to get another form of HTML data, and that is tag metadata, such as class, href, ID, and more. So if we go back up to our HTML here, we can see that a lot of our tags have some metadata here, such as this p tag has a class that says title, and this p tag has a class that says story, and these anchor tags have their href, which points to the actual URL of their link. So what happens if in Beautiful Soup we'd like to access this kind of data? 
Well, you're not gonna be able to get at it with this dot notation, but what you can do is use some equally convenient dictionary notation. So to give an example here with our p tag, let's say we wanted to access this p tags class data, we can do the following. So we can do print soup.p and then with some dictionary notation in brackets, we can simply type the name of the HTML metadata that we want here. So in this example, we want class and we should get exactly that if we test this out. Okay, so here we go. We can see that this has returned this has returned the class of this tag. Now it's important to note that the data type that this returns is actually a list. Even if there's only one element or one piece of data that is returned from a particular tag, it will still give you that information in a list. So just remember to keep track of that detail. But let's go ahead and try another one of these with a different type of metadata. So let's say we want to get the URL of this particular anchor tag. So we can type print soup.a and we want to get the href. Let's see what this gives us. And here we go. You can see when we get the href, we actually do just get this as a single string. So you may be wondering why in the case of getting the href, this would return a string, not inside of a list, but when returning the class, this will return a list even if it's a single element. Well, this goes back to the role of these different tags in HTML. So inside of HTML, a class can actually have multiple separated values representing multiple classes. But usually we only have one value for an href and beautiful soup knows this and anticipates it as such. Watching out carefully for exactly the type of data that's returned from particular queries in beautiful soup can be very important, especially when we get to parsing more complicated documents. But returning to our code here, our call to soup.a raises an interesting question. Because if we return to our document, we can see that we actually have three different a tags inside of our document. But when we call soup.a, we can see that we're actually only getting, we're actually only getting the contents of the first a tag. So the question becomes, how do we actually access these other a tags? And we'll go over this in a subsequent video.